are you? I hope everybody's doing well. This is your Shirley Triple G coming at you once again. Today is October 10th, 2017. Uh, there was a unboxing video that I did from my hotel room about a week ago with this guitar. All right, so uh, by now I've uh, rolled some uh, still pictures for you, but let's take a look at the guitar before we go on any further, okay? So here's the body. It is an older body with a quilted maple top. It is done extremely well in terms of the details on the quilted maple. Madagascar ebony fingerboard with... Is that a uh, moon and the star inlay or is that like a, a cliffs with the star in front? I don't know. Crescent moon something. Okay, so the quilted maple carries through the headstock, which is very extremely tastefully done. You can see the... Um, uh, it's not like a overdone type of a binding, but you can see a really nicely done binding around the neck, which carries on the body. I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but there you go. So the body and just painted back including the neck which is somewhat unfortunate although it doesn't bother me a ton um, the uh, fingerboard radius is a 14 inches and the pickups are EMG 81 on the bridge EMG 60 on the neck Floyd locking tremolo system and um, just a standard affair <coughs> ESP LTD tuning heads all right so that's sort of the overall look of the guitar all right so let's take a look uh, let's talk about this guitar for a second so depending on who you are you have a band or two that you associate yourself with right so uh you know some some of the older guys maybe you identify with led zeppelin that's the band that defines who you are and maybe rolling stones kiss you know what have you for me, I was born in 1972. I got to know Metallica like right around 1985 through illegal records that I imported um, while I was in Korea. Um, so I came to America in 1989. So basically when Metallica was just kind of really building up, um, you know, I've gotten to know them and they're still together, albeit with a couple member changes. So that's the band that I, you know, identify with. And, you know, that's the band music that I've always um, had around me uh, with their constant output of the albums and what have you. Granted, I didn't give a whole lot of attention to Lulu and um, like Reload. Those were some bad times for the band, but um, that's the band that I associate with. So naturally, I gravitate a lot towards James Hetfield, Kirk Hammett, um, you know, what have you, right? So a couple months ago, I went to Metallica concert right here in Pasadena, California. Really enjoyed the show. Uh, it was a little unfortunate to see my heroes getting a little bit older. Um, you could see a lot of wrinkles and what have you on, you know, their faces when, when they're showing up on the big screen at the concert venue. And, you know, their anger and their aggression is just not there anymore. However, they still put on a good show. What was unfortunate that day, I don't know if any of you were uh, at that show with me. I felt Kirk's playing was a little off. I don't know what went on. Uh, he was hitting a lot of bum notes. Uh, there was a couple moments where I even questioned the guy next to me, is he out of tune? Um, so I, you know, I, I don't know what's going on with that, but nonetheless, James Hetfield, Kirk Hammett, two of my, um, you know, favorite guitar players among all, Randy Rhodes being my very favorite. But anyhow, so Kirk's known for a lot of different signature guitars that he has, right? Um, I have his, uh, LTD KH602, which is basically this, with just solid black finish. Although that guitar has 81 and 81 in both pickup locations. And then um, the one that I like the most actually is the one that he's seen most often with. The, um, the Karloff Mummy guitar. I would love to have one of those but that seems to be very difficult. So um, you know, then he's got the, uh, the Dracula, then he's got the 
couple different finishes and he's got the black wedgie board guitar which basically looks just like this which is the original right so anyhow esp a couple weeks ago put out a little facebook notice saying hey we have this new special limited edition i could not um jump at it quicker i went to the store right after and got it and that's how this is here so uh, the story is the ESP version of it, they have only made 25 of those and those are costing $12,000 uh, per guitar. I don't know if that's worth it, uh, obviously it's not. Um, <coughs> if Kirk Hammett ESP version tickles your balls, maybe 12000 speaks to you. To me it doesn't, luckily they put out a little bit more afford affordable version uh, from LTD for common folks like myself and some of you. So um, the difference is, well the material and everything very similar. Uh, the ESP version I noticed they have a very hard um, line, more definition right here for the contour or, um, of the forearm. And then the paint job of the wedgie board carries over the two pickups for the ESP version. Crafted in Japan, blah, blah, blah. This Korean made LTD is uh, solidly, just solidly put together. It is um, just gorgeous in person. The quilted maple top is one of the best I've, uh, I've seen. Um, dare I say, PRS-esque. <laughs> uh, volume, volume, tone, three-way switch. There is no push-pull. Uh, what else? And then um, the ebony, the Madagascar ebony, which is a sustainable wood. If you look at it close, you some some of you may not see it as ebony, because typically guitar companies would ble uh, not not bleach, uh, will um, paint the uh, the board to make it look even more black. But this has a um, very natural stain and looks kind of like rosewood if you don't pay attention. But it is ebony and. Uh, the neck profile is, I mean, I should be familiar with this neck profile because I love playing my KH602 often, but I don't know why it feels slightly thicker to me. Um, so that's as far as that's concerned, but like the build quality is just solid. There is no blemish in any sort of a finishing. Uh, the fret wires are extremely smoothly done. Uh, there is nothing sticking out, extra jumbo fret. Uh, ESP will put, put uh, ESP puts out this guitar in um, 9 through 42 string gauges and um, what else is there as far as the pickups concerned not my uh, cup of tea but being active they are they have a tremendous amount of headroom so um, you know there, there there's plenty of bite and room for attack so if that's the type of tone you like obviously Metallica has done very well with these, so um, pickups are very nice and um, a little sterile perhaps, but depending on the application, they uh, suit your needs just fine. Now, I could screw shit up by taking these out and putting in the 5766 that I like so much, and then lo and behold, God forbid, years down the road, if I have to sell it, then just to swap it back to 81 and 60 original condition at that point I don't know I might keep it the way it is who knows um, but I tell you what it is um, you know it is light it's not very heavy at all again uh, the body is older with the uh, maple cap maple top and um, it's not very heavy it feels really comfortable just right and um, neck because of my small hands I prefer you know thinner necks Lately, I've been, all the guitars I've been buying are just all shredderific guitars. Uh, this thing, I got the Ibanez Gem, I got um, Ibanez uh, Iron Label, I got a whole bunch of other guitars this year. They are all, like, majority of them, minus the Strandberg Bowden, they are all this type of guitar. So, I don't know, maybe that's kind of my where my mindset is, although, you know, I'm far away from being shredderific. So um, that's that. Um, what's there to fault? I mean, I like a lot about this guitar. The finish is gorgeous. Um, the sound is something that you could um, imagine in your head with the 8160, the typical Metallica sound. Um, 
really not much to fault other than I just wish I would have seen um, unfinished neck here, maybe just the uh, tongue oil or just a kind of a some sort of a satin finish I would have uh, liked. Um, but you know, in the event they have a blemish on the guitar, you know, by painting it solid like this, it also reduces the manufacturing cost down and it's just uh, easier to hide any sort of issues they may have. Is that why they painted it just solid black? I don't know, but that is something um, to take note of. So, uh, you know, when you get this guitar, you get the uh, form-fitting ESP hard shell case with the Kirk Hammett and Widgie logo right on the, on the top. And uh, it does come with the certificate of authenticity indicating, uh, denoting the serial number of each guitar. So that's about it. I mean, there is, I, you know, me being a fanboy, I bought it because I li liked it. Um, so there, I'm, I'm not gonna have a whole lot of negative things to say. So that's kind of uh, what this guitar is about. I uh, actually had a uh, iron label Ibanez queued up for the uh, next video, but because I uh, ended up getting this thing in a hurry, I wanted to show it to you guys. So I kind of uh, rearranged my episode queue and I uh, came to see you with this guitar today. So next time will be the Ibanez Iron Label RGIX6 or something something. It's, it's just gorgeous guitar. So I'll show that one to you next time. So there you go. Until next time, you guys all take care. I've been Triple G. You've been absolutely awesome. I'll see you again next time. Take care.